Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin met at a Russian spaceport today to talk about potential weapons and satellite technology deals. The world's most deadly and shortest dictators toured the rocket launch site before sitting down for a press conference. They talked about prioritising the strategic importance of North Korea-Russia relations, which should send a, send a shudder down all our spines. Is this new worrying development in the real Star Wars, or are Kim and Vlad just trivial bit part players in a new global space race? Well, who better to ask than the world's well, he's the most brilliant and the world's most famous astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm so pleased to have him back on the show. Neil, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me back. So Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin and space seems an unholy trilogy. What is your view <laughs> of what, what, what went down today? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't in the conversation, but seeing the images, uh, it's it's a little bit worrisome because space is is we've known for decades, though it's a it's a new high ground, and from a military strategic perspective, high ground gives you power, mm. uh, power that you didn't previously have. So yes, this this alliance of of nations that, that we're not friendly with. Uh, now that we're not friendly with concerns me. But what concerns me even more is space can be a place where we all come together mm. for peaceful purposes, more so than anything we might ever do on Earth's surface. So uh, for me, it's an extra offense for anyone to speak of space weaponry. Uh, because in space, while yeah, you can have borders of countries on Earth, in space, there are no borders, right? right? It's just space. And so, it, to me, it's a violation of a, of, of a human... Our, the, our, our species contract with the universe, if I can call it yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, when you saw, for example, India launching rockets um, last week, I think it was, I mean, it, I found that very uplifting to watch that. It was amazing to watch it, exciting. I remember it took me right back to the 60s and 70s when I used to watch all the rocket launches as a kid. Uh, what did you feel watching all that? Yeah, so uh, you're, you're probably talking about the mission that where they landed near the South Pole of the Moon, as the yeah. graphic there uh, shows. So they're the first country to land in that part of the Moon. The South Pole might have a repository of water trapped in the base of craters where the sun don't shine, mm. <laughs> because the rim of the crater is higher than the angle that the sun will ever reach it. And so the history of comet impacts and other things, water brought to the Moon would evaporate where the sun shines, but stay forever where the sun doesn't shine. And so they're the first there. This was great. They were dancing in the streets. Yes. And uh, I was... Uh, so... And they become the fourth country to softly land on the moon, mm -hmm. joining... The, and so the idea that this becomes an, a, a world uh, where countries participate uh, so that it becomes... The solar system becomes our collective backyard. A am I... Am I too naive to think that that's possible? I, I don't know. Well, it's interesting. Be, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit like it. artificial intelligence. You know, a lot of it is incredibly exciting and, you know, wildly, like, you know, you can go into wild new frontiers of, of potential. And, of course, there's another part of me thinks this is going to be incredibly dangerous because the wrong people will get their hands on AI and do bad things with it. Yeah, so that's a very important observation to make because the press that AI is getting today leaves people to think that all AI is bad mm. when, in my field, we've been using AI for decades at some levels or another, and every next power of AI that comes on, on online, we absorb it because we let it do the work. I don't want it to do the work. Right. <laughs> I have right. other things I can do. Yeah. So, so yeah, it shouldn't indict the entire enterprise of AI because you can imagine some parts of AI turning rogue. So with space, yeah, I, I, I want space to be peaceful. Think about it. In the International Space Station, it is a joint project with Russia and the United States and other countries. So if countries can't get along on Earth, do you expect astronauts in space to say, OK, separate, don't talk to each other because our leaders can't get along? That's almost childish mm. to expect that. When, when you have scientists and engineers in space doing real interesting work. For the there benefit were two, of our two species. stories, Neil, that I, when I saw them, I thought of you immediately. One is that scientists at NASA have announced the existence of a possible planet that could sustain life. Tell me about this. Yeah, so that's uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, if it's the new story I'm thinking about. Uh, uh, it has the power to observe the atmosphere 
and the chemical composition of the atmosphere of exoplanets if the planet passes in front of the host star. Light from the host star will move through the air and the chemicals in the atmosphere will leave its fingerprint in the spectrum that we receive. And it found methane, it found carbon dioxide, and th these consider these as biomarkers. If there's evidence of life on the surface, it may, if there's life on the surface, it may manifest in the chemistry of the atmosphere. And it's in the Goldilocks zone where you can sustain liquid water too close, the water evaporates. Too far, the water freezes. Everywhere there's liquid water on Earth, there's life. If not fishes, then there's microbial life. So NASA's mantra is follow the water if you want to find life. And if we, so if this, so if I'm ready for the, the, the list of planets to go to, uh, we'll rank them based on these kinds of evidence right. to say, if, if we want to uh, have a second Earth or move somewhere, let's try this one first, and then the next one, and then the next one. Because mm. plenty of the exoplanets would be fully in, inhospitable to life as we know it. Fascinating. Uh, the other thing was UFOs. So the US Congress convened uh, this panel about unidentified anomalous phenomenon, UAPs, to try and work out what we do and don't know. Um, at the same time, as we're speaking, and this is freaky, but as we're speaking, apparently the Mexican parliament Someone's just produced images of alien corpses uh, in the Mexican parliament and said they're alien corpses. So I guess my question for you, Neil, is do you believe that there are loads of aliens out there? Do you believe that governments perhaps know more than we do? Um, and should we be fearful about this? Yeah, so first of all, those are not images of alien corpses in Mexico. Those are presented as actual alien mummif mummified aliens from like a thousand years ago. So here's what you do. When we went to the moon, we brought moon rocks back and NASA allowed scientists of the world to analyze those rocks. It shared samples with everyone rather than give it to only one lab. So if those are actual mummified aliens, mm found in Mexico or wherever they were, I overheard the press conference, they said they carbon-14 dated it. It has 30% overlap DNA with humans. If those are aliens, that would be amazing. Mm. But in science, you need verification from independent sources. So what they should do, as we know from, al from, from mummies, uh, there's still a, a soft tissue in the mummies. If he carbon-14 dated that, I don't know if he did it on the soft tissue or on the bones, but my, my point is you share the data with other laboratories. Mm. And when you have agreement among what is measured, then you can talk about it as a discovery. But the press loves chasing singular stories mm. by one laboratory that says, no one else has this, but we do. Mm. You all just run to that and report it like it's the truth. So, but science is not established by single measurements or observations. Are you, you have to saying, verify it. Are you saying we tend to sensationalize these things now? <laughs> <laughs> no, did I say that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did.